the Democrats have got either fish or cut bait. Like if they can't drive Joe Biden from the race, they need to line up behind Joe Biden because there's no middle ground here. You're either united, you know, a house divided against itself can't stand. You're either united or your side loses. They've got to make decisions fast. And all these stories about Nancy uh, furiously going around trying to undermine Joe Biden, it's not working. I mean, I don't even know if that's true. We keep hearing about Barack Obama and all of Barack Obama's people quietly working behind the scenes to undermine Joe Biden. If they are. That's not helpful. It's not helpful, first of all. And secondly, it's not working with the rank and file base. Hey guys, my name is Devori Darkins and welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, we're going to be actually covering this new story, which every single day there's a story just like this where another Democrat is coming out and telling President Biden to drop out. And that Democrat today is Adam Pencilneck Schiff. Yes, Pencilneck, right? And, um, you know, the way he did it wasn't in a video format, but he did release a statement. And we're going to look into that, react to it, and some other new developing news in regards to the likelihood that President Biden is going to drop out or not. And before I play this video, you already know what to do. Like, share, and subscribe. Play the video. Well, Democratic Congressman Adam Schiff has joined the calls for President Biden to drop out of the 2024 presidential race. Schiff is the highest ranking Democrat to make this push so far. And in a statement obtained by CBS News, a California lawmaker says, quote, Joe Biden has been one of the most consequential presidents in our nation's history, and his lifetime of service as a senator, a vice president, and now as president has made our country better. But he goes on to say, our nation is at a crossroads. A second Trump presidency will undermine the very foundation of our democracy. And I have serious concerns about whether the president can defeat Donald Trump in November. Yeah, now that is a professional, polite way of saying, hey, you need to drop out and you need to drop out like yesterday, right? And she did say this is the highest ranking member on the Democrat side that has called for Biden to drop out, but there's actually more in the same day, but was reported later. Let's actually take a look at that as well. And I am told that the pressure from Democratic leaders for Biden to get out of the race is intensifying. In fact, one person who has been out there publicly defending Biden told me just a short while ago, Biden is going to see the whole house of cards come down soon. As for that meeting in Rehoboth, Delaware, I am told that this was a one-on-one -on -one meeting, just the Senate leader and the president, and that Chuck Schumer forcefully made the case that it would be better for Biden, better for the Democratic Party, and better for the country if he were to bow out of the race. And David, when I went to, to Schumer's office, to ask them about, to tell them I was gonna report this and tell you this tonight, uh, absolutely no denial uh, from Senator Schumer's office. They only said this, Leader Schumer conveyed the views of his caucus. In other words, the views of Democratic senators. I am also told that Hakeem Jeffries, the Democratic leader in the House, has expressed similar views directly uh, to the president. Well, there it is, right? So you got Hakeem Jeffries, Chuck Schumer, and Adam Schiff all in one day telling the president that he needs to drop out. I mean, they have really turned the heat up on him. And the good thing for him, I guess, is it hasn't gone publicly, not not as much as it could be. It's not like they all held a press conference making this statement and calling for him to drop out. And it's really said best. Right now, the Republicans are together and the, and the Democrats are all over the place right now. But let's actually take a closer look at who on the list has publicly acknowledged that they want Joe Biden to drop out and I actually find these names pretty entertaining and you might as well. Let's take a look here. So we've got the new one, which was today, Adam Schiff. And like I said, Chuck Schumer, Hakeem Jeffries, even though they haven't made a public statement, clearly they're already leaking that information in a professional way um, because Democrats are great at leaking stuff. Of course, you got Brittany Peterson. I really don't know. Mike Levine, don't know. Uh, let's see here. Let's see some other names. You got, actually, let's count this. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. You're up to 20 Democrats publicly calling for him to drop out, including the celebrities, which you guys probably heard earlier in the week, George Clooney, uh, Stephen King, uh, Rob Reiner. That That is huge right there. And some other wealthy donors, billionaire Mark uh, who has reportedly donated more than $1 million to support Biden and the Democrats since December. I mean, that's a lot of money, but that that's not like Elon Musk money, right? So, um, And then you have um, Joe Scarborough, which is probably one of Biden's biggest defenders, uh, which was a clip I played in the beginning of this video, where it's just really an, an a ultimatum. Either cut him right now, get him out of there, or we need to support him as one. And one of the bigger surprises, which happened earlier in this whole um, like drama series here, is David Axrod was one of the first people even last year to say that they shouldn't be running with uh, Biden as the um, new president for 2024. And a lot of people thought that was crazy. Um, but hey, it is what it is. And then some former politicians, Tim Ryan, Andrew Yang. And as you guys can see, the heat is just getting it. They're just turning it up, right? That's where it's at right now, which leads us to this. CNN is learning of a contentious weekend phone call between Joe Biden and some House Democrats. And the details show just how dug in the president is and also how resistant he is to entertaining some valid concerns about how his debate performance has eroded some key support. Sources say at one point during the call, President Biden lashed out at Congressman Jason Crow, who is a moderate Democrat, after Crow said bluntly, that voters are concerned about Biden, especially on the world stage. The president reportedly told Crow, who is an army ranger who served in Iraq and Afghanistan, that he knows Crow is a Bronze Star recipient like his son Bo, but that he, Crow, quote, didn't rebuild NATO. After that, the call only grew more contentious as Crow pushed back, telling the president the voters aren't seeing him that way. And that's when Biden told Crow, quote, I don't want to hear that crap and said the congressman could walk away if he wanted, to which Crow said he didn't want to walk away, but Biden angry replied that Crow should just walk away. Our sources say that Biden also had a tense exchange with Congresswoman Chrissy Houlihan of Pennsylvania. Houlihan reportedly telling the president that she was concerned about his standing in a key county in her battleground state, but Biden pushed back and suggested he didn't believe her. Houlihan then told Biden that she had polling to back it up. And according to our sources, Biden responded by telling Houlihan he'd send her talking points of everything that he'd done for Pennsylvania and reminded her that he had married a Philly girl. Right, so what do we see? We, we, we keep hearing and seeing the same theme over and over and over again. It's as if the president is in denial, right? Just deny, 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 none of it is true. And it's a, it's a full on, gaslighting session not only on the american people but on his voters the donors and the democrats right the writing is on the wall the numbers are telling the story his physical appearance is telling the story that he's not going to be able to stick around for another four years think about this if he was to stick around another four years how old would he be in the fourth year of his presidency he would be 85 or turning 85 right i mean that's not a good look OK, that's just not a good look, not for what that job demands. So they're doing whatever they can to urge him and privately to drop out. But that's not the actual end of the Democrats problems. And CNN actually explains this. Let's take a look. The people that I'm hearing from are still believe that the Democrats could go into August with a contest an undecided convention. I don't want to use the word contested, but the question is, will they go in with a clear nominee? Many people that I'm speaking with believe at this moment that they likely will not. And in the rational process, you might come to the conclusion that Kamala Harris is the most winnable candidate, but, and you would right. go from the there. The problem with Van is that there's not enough time for a rational yeah. process. Well, yeah, exactly. That's part well, of the problem. John? That's exactly right in the sense that, think of where we are. We are one month to 
the Democratic Convention. This Republican Convention is a show of unity, and they are improving their position, and as of today, they would win and win convincingly. Mm. They would take the Senate, and they probably would keep the House. That's what Democrats are looking at right now. So you have a month to the Democratic Convention, which is why Democrats are telling the president, make this decision and make it now. Yeah, but there's one problem. If Kamala Harris does step up, she's not polling any better than Joe Biden because she's in the ticket. She was part of this administration and she doesn't have the best track record. And when she went out there and was running for president back in 2020, she got crushed, right? And so they have really put themselves in a position where it's a lose-lose. It's just, it just depends on how, how they want to go about it. Meaning if they go with Biden, do they believe they can get more votes with him than Kamala Harris? Or do they believe they can make the chaotic, risky move and go with an entirely different ticket and get more votes out of that? One thing's for sure, this hasn't really happened, I don't think, ever in history. And it's going to be interesting and exciting moving forward on their side of things. But um, listen, my mindset is very clear. This is Mindset 101. The writing was on the wall for the last four years, and they ignored it. They put too much energy into demonizing Donald Trump. They put all their resources, their focus, their message, their policies all about him. And they forgot the one thing that is important to get elected for the next four years. And because that's been on the back burner, they were not able to address these issues in a timely manner. It has caught up to them and they're in trouble. So that's my mindset about this. What about yours? What do you think about Adam Schiff coming out and saying the words that he said? What about the private meeting, right, that was still leaked by Chuck Schumer and Hakeem Jeffries asking Biden to step away? What do you think about Kamala Harris replacing him? Who do you think would be better, right? Answer this and more in the comment section below. Thank you for checking out the video today, and I'll see you in the next one.